anytime. So excited to get a chance to connect with you today. You're someone that I deeply admire for many, multiple reasons. And today we get a chance to talk about something that you're not just knowledgeable in, but really passionate about, which is the topic of sex. So first and foremost, I want to welcome you to this interview. And uh, I'm so excited to get a chance to tap into your wisdom today. Mm, thank you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Well, my first question, instead of reading something that's just basic about you, I'd love for you to tell me, kind of like start by telling me who you are and what you do, and then go back a little bit into your background as to what got you really interested in sex as a topic of study, and then as uh, something that you share with other people uh, in terms of understanding of how to step more into life. Okay, great. Um, so I, I actually, I harpoon dolphins for a living. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, I, <laughs> I, work, <laughs> I work in the arena of healthy sexuality. And I started out as a social worker many years ago, working with people with HIV and refu eventually refugees and all sorts of different populations. And then I made my, made my way to, Cal uh, to uh, New York years ago mm -hmm. and um, began to delve into everything I could find around the mind-body connection. I started dancing, I did somatics, I did uh, meditation, yoga, qigong, like you name it. Mm -hmm. And the deeper I went into my, my body and understood the intelligence and the wisdom there, the more I grew as an erotic being, you could say. And then I started to see where other people um, were either connected or you know, more or less connected to their in body's intelligence and wisdom. Mm. And when I worked in hospital setting is when I really started to feel a lot of empathy and compassion for the medical staff. I worked with nurses. I trained them in mind-body techniques like hypnosis for their patients mm. to help their patients relax, you know, and, and not rely only on drugs um, or anesthesia or, or allopathic medicine, but to have an integrative approach to their, um, to their healing process. And what it, where I couldn't go in that setting was to talk about sex. That was like the last frontier. Mm. It's so taboo still, and for people that are highly trained, it's like the, the more you're trained, the more professional you become, the less okay it is to say the words, I love my patients, mm. I love my clients, um, and to talk about sex or pleasure. It's completely not okay, totally unprofessional, right? So. I saw that there was a huge need to bring training and education to people that care for others, people that are in leadership positions, people that are teachers um, and parents. And you know, there's such a lack of really empowering education around sexuality, sensuality, um, body-based wisdom, and that's what's missing. So that's why I created the Sex and Medicine Summit to address that gap in training and information and and comfort, just level of comfort in people talking about sexuality. You talk about you talk this disconnect that exists between society and the ability to say, especially if you're highly trained, talk about love or sex. What, why do you think that is? When you have societies for, I guess, centuries who've been way more open about this and integrated this more into their culture, why do you think that we've come so far in so many ways? But are still so backwards in our understanding of what sex is in, in humanity. I think that um, sex is the domain of the feminine, mm -hmm. and it's one of the aspects of, of humanity. Of course, that's universal, but it's, it's really the domain of the feminine in every human being. So where we've been overdeveloped is in the masculine aspect and the, like the rational faculty being highly trained, being professional, memorizing information, um, having, having uh, critical thinking skills, like all the things that highly trained professionals are good at, but what's lacking is delving into the experiential, the intuitive, the sensual, um, all things having to do with the body, wisdom of the body is left out because we're just in that time in history where up until more recently, I think there's a reemergence of the feminine again. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for the most part, if you're going through college and you're, if you're becoming a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a psychiatrist, um, 
you know, any number, a teacher, you're not going to get education in body wisdom or body intelligence or emotional intelligence mm. or anything to do with sensuality. And all those things inform everything else. So there's no, it's not like sex is over here and then the rest of life is over here. It's, it's all affects everything else. So I think that's just um, a holdover from, from our earlier times, like the Judeo-Christian paradigm, more, more um, patriarchal paradigm. Hmm. And we're seeing that that's kind of, you know, it's giving way to something new. Hmm. What yeah. do you think is, uh, what do you think is being in this and connecting with so many people who are interested in learning more about what you teach, what have you seen in practice that is the, some, what are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about sex in this day and age? That's a big question. I mean, yes. <laughs> I guess I'll, I think <laughs> so there's so many. Well, for one, you know, if, if kids want to learn about sex, then their, their point of reference is our other kids or porn. And now there's this, you know, you can find porn anywhere. It's accessible to every kid, you know, pretty much in, all around the world. Um, and that's, unfortunately, that's the primary source for educating or informing uh, people's understanding of what sex is. And so I think that's very limited because it's, it's a one dimensional approach to sex. You could say, I often say that porn doesn't really have anything to do with sex. It's, um, it's more of like a mechanical exercise, but sex to me is all, it, it's all of life. It's intimacy, it's communication, it's connection, it's communion, um, it's vulnerability, it's surrender. There's so many aspects that are completely missing from that picture of what porn represents. Mm. And um, I don't really even have that strong of a judgment against porn. I think people just want to get off and that's fine. You know, it's like if you use it for that, whatever, cool. But it's there's so much more and that's um, I think what leaves people lacking of what's possible. Um, and the other misconception is I, I think specifically for healthcare, mm -hmm. people in health and people who care about um, personal development is it's, it, it's totally connected to your level degree of self-expression. If you're blocked in your sexuality, you are blocked. You're going to, that's going to show up in other areas, financially, uh, in your relationships, in how much space you take up, how much self-confidence you have. Mm -hmm. Specifically for women, the more you reclaim your sexuality, the more confidence you have, the more radiance you have, the more comfort you have in asking for what you need and want. Um, for men, the same. Confidence, um, self-expression, presence, all those things are really powerful um, aspects of being a leader, being, being and being fulfilled in mm -hmm. life. What uh, I connect with so many women who are in this catch-22 thing because they, they have the yearning, intuitive yearning for something more and sex is part of that, but they've had traumatic experience, whether it's rape or sexual abuse or just uh, very unfulfilling relationships where they've not been able to experience what they want. And as much as they want to experience it, they're so scared and closed off to that experience. Mm -hmm. So for them to open up with a partner is really scary. But at the same time, if they never get a chance to do that, then they may never get the healing that they need. What would be, mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's no uh, replacement for either therapy or work with someone. I mean, in generic terms, I mean, like, but, but what would you say to someone who is finding herself in that situation where they're not sure what's the, even the first step to take to start opening up mm. to sex again? I think the safest place to start it, and most empowering is with yourself, you know, creating um, ritual, cre doing practices that connect you back to your own, your relation, your primary relationship, your primary intimate relationship is with yourself. And that's the, the longest relationship you will have in your life is with your own body. Mm -hmm. And if you can start to reestablish trust in your own body, you as the caregiver, you as the um, parent, you as the lover of yourself first, that's the strongest bond 
that will then translate into every other relationship, including a sexual partner. So the more you can establish trust with yourself, the more the easier it is to then realize that consent is something agency, like creating sexual agency. That's really what it's about. So whatever feeds sexual agency is what we have to focus on, not what you know, not kind of going back into the old narrative of of, of victimization. And I think there's a place for therapy. There's a place for talk therapy. There are many modalities out there that can help people regain a sense of their uh, their body, like sensation, pleasure. But one of the most powerful ones, which I um, recommend for people who would like something quite transformational, um, is just getting on the table with a sexological body worker and having actual physical touch that's safe, that has clear boundaries, that's professional, um, with highly trained practitioners, because the the trauma is lodged inside of the body, in the tissues, in the cells. And all the talking in the world is not going to release that accumulated physical, visceral um, muscle memory in the body that's associated with pleasure. So if something terrible is associated with pleasure, your body will try to protect and hold back, numb out, dissociate, where and cause pain. A lot of women have chronic vaginal pain, pelvic pain, and they could be on all the drugs in the world and do all this, these external things in the world, but until it's actually addressed, I believe, on a physical level, mm-hmm. that pain will re- remain there. And it, can, it can last for 18 years, 50 years, yeah. and not be released because it's, a, it's all connected with the emotional self. The seat of the emotions is in the pelvic floor. For the woman, it's like another brain. that They call it the pelvic neural network. Mm. Um, a great book for women to read is called Vagina, a new biography by Naomi Wolf. Highly recommend that book to every woman. Okay. And every man and every man who likes to, you know, play with the woman. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> who likes to, like, support women in their unfolding and their flowering sexually. So it's a phenomenal book. Uh, also, the most recently published book, a uh, similar topic, the book's called Pussy, mm-hmm. a Reclamation, and it's already a national bestseller by Regina thomas Sauer. They're both just phenomenal books. So, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> I could go on about that. But <laughs> So talking about a different group of women, some women are in that space and some women find themselves, they've just, they're just not feeling it. I mean, they've, they are not afraid of sex. They've experienced it and they even may even have a partner that they're happy with, but they're not feeling that it's taking them to the next level, which in my mind, it's not just this physical experience, it's a spiritual experience. What would you yeah. say to those women who are not at the point where they're afraid of sex, but they are at the point where they feel like there's something missing, there's something more mm-hmm. for them to experience and they're not finding the way to experience that reality? Mm. I mean, it's so individual, right? I, I, some women need, every woman needs something slightly different to you. Like just like a nutrition plan or mm-hmm. exercise routine. There's not one size fits all, but I could say what's helped me to enrich my own journey as an erotic being and coming into myself more as a woman has been to just one, to be curious and to remain curious, to remain in the inquiry because every sex, sexuality is an infinite realm and there's always more to discover and explore about our bodies. Our bodies also have this infinite capacity for sensation and women are designed for pleasure. Women are designed with all these nerve endings everywhere <laughs> and super sensitivity. And so I would say, again, it's that relationship with the bot, with one's own body. Like you're the primary caregiver, caretaker, primary lover, primary, you know, friend to your own body so become curious and start to do your own practice i think with or whether you have a partner or not it's extremely important for every woman to maintain her own sexual energy practice mm-hmm. so whether that's tantra or taoism or uh, some other contemporary um, sexual energy practice that helps work deliberately with sexual energy it's this, this incredible nuclear fuel a uh, repository that we have in our bodies that can not only, you know, is it about pleasure, but maintaining our youth, our elasticity of skin, like all these wonderful yeah. benefits that 
when a woman is in charge of her sexuality, taking full ownership of that, then these this whole array of beautiful things also comes with it. Um, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> so it's a great place to start. Let's yeah. talk about uh, what you have coming up right now. Can you talk to me about your Sex and Medicine Summit series and when the next one is happening, what's involved, and how can people participate in, in this experience? Yeah. So we did it last year. The first, the uh, Sex and Medicine Summit launched in New York City um, mm -hmm. as a live event. And then we also had a virtual summit, which you can check out, uh, sexandmedicinesummit.com. And we had 24 different interviews, lots of beautiful topics like neuroscience and orgasm and um Psych, you know, from the psychiatric perspective, how nutrients affect libido. Um, we addressed male sexuality as well, looking at erectile dysfunction and from a, a holistic standpoint and so many other topics. Mm -hmm. And the feedback was phenomenal. People were just going crazy, like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really helped me in my life. And especially a lot of um, professionals who are in the health field we're like, this is great. I didn't get any of this kind of training in, in my um, schooling and, and this has helped me with my patients and clients. So we decided to do now another series um, starting October 27th uh -huh. and it's gonna be a live event in New York but we're also live streaming so people can watch from anywhere in the world. Uh -huh. And um, what else? It's, it's just the beginning of a whole, you know, many more discussions and important dialogues that I don't really see being addressed that often, especially in the context of health and wellness. And um, the, the, the topic of the first one is, we're, we're calling it the big release, uh -huh. sex, sex, trauma, and the medicine of pleasure. Mm -hmm. So that instead of just looking at the journey to healing as kind of this difficult, painful, arduous journey um, where you sit and talk with someone in a room, that actually pleasure itself is, is very, very powerful and is a um, healing agent in our lives. And the more we go into pleasure, of course, things come up. Sex is very explosive sometimes and emotionally stirs up all this stuff. And that's a good thing when you have the right tools and container to, to navigate that. And so the people I'm bringing on into the summit as panelists are extraordinary. I mean, they're doing phenomenal work where people are experiencing massive transformation of, of everything in their life. Because again, it's like sexual energy is the, is the root, is the foundation of all our other expressions as humans. So if that level is blocked, everything else will be you know, out of balance. So they're helping people reclaim their sexual energy, their, their, their power as a woman or as a man, their confidence, and it's just shattering the old pathology model of like, well, if you experience rape or sexual abuse, that you're just damaged goods, or I'll never be the same, or I'll never be able to orgasm, or I'll, I'll always carry this shame. And those kind of beliefs, we're just completely busting those apart and create, showing that it's possible that, and it doesn't have to take 30 years mm -hmm. to be whole. It doesn't have to be 20 years before you could experience an incredible orgasm as a woman or as a man. So that's what we're up to. Uh, so really what exciting. is the website again? Um, so the... I'm going to place the link below this video, but for some people yeah. who are watching on their mobile, it's hard to just click on the same thing. Yeah. What's the website again? Sexandmedicinesummit.com is from our main summit last year. And then I'll send you the link for the, um, the one coming up in October. Okay, so, so I'll, pl I'll place a link uh, below for the new one. If people want to, whether they're in New York and they want to attend live or whether they want to attend from anywhere in the world, uh, they'll have a, a place mm -hmm. to do that from here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Anita, oh. thank you so much for sharing all of this. I'm so excited. I, I Having, being in the trenches as you are, connecting with so many women every single day who are experiencing an inexplicable series of emotions around sex and not having a clear path to where to find more where to heal uh, what you're doing is so invaluable so so mm -hmm. thankful for the work you do so grateful to know you and uh, can't mm -hmm. wait to continue sharing more of what you have uh, more of your wisdom with the people that I get a privilege to serve thank you and to all the, all the women and all the people watching I just want to send so much love and 
I just feel so honored to be in this journey as a human being right now in this time as a woman in this time in history is so potent and it's possible to have everything you actually do want as a woman. It's totally possible. <laughs> Thank you again, Anita. <laughs>